So hello everybody and welcome to another Power BI update. This time it is for June 2021 and we're going to go through all the updates here. Stay tuned. Okay, the first update it is paginated reports visual. So it is a visual that will be added on Power BI desktop out of the box that allows you to embed paginated reports. I personally would prefer to have pagination on tables and matrices, but hey, it is what it is. So if you're using paginated reports, probably you're very excited about this feature. The next one is a new setting that will allow you to set the transparency on area charts, which is a nice addition, obviously. And for X and Y Cartesian axis, X and Y axis with categories where you can put text on the axis, you have now the possibility to specify the inner pattern, which is, for example, if you have a column chart, you will be able to specify the distance between the columns, so how tight they should be. And for multiple, small multiples visuals, they have added responsiveness and the possibility to conditional format the background and the title. Now we move to analytics Q&A. Now I'm very curious, how many of you are using q and I haven't seen anybody use it, so let me know in the comment box if you use it or your organization use it. But anyhow, the updates for q and in here is that sometimes users ask ambiguous questions, obviously. So they have the example, for example, top product. So what is going to happen is that the engine is going to try to guess what the user is actually asking to provide a, an answer. And I'm not really sure that this is a good idea. They are actually putting you under what you write, what they guessed, but I don't think it's discoverably enough. They should flag it that this is, that I don't understand what you're saying. Is this what you mean? Like really, really clear? Because in their example, they have, for example, top products and they guess it to top 10 products for unit price. If I write top products, I would probably say top selling products. So if you don't read that small text, you probably will read the wrong information in the chart. I think it's, it's dangerous practice. So if you're using QA, be careful. Use these things, absolutely, but use them with care because they might fool you, basically. Now for data preparation, data flows allow now for direct query. And that is actually a very good thing. If you have a lot of data, or if you think about it, you have you create a data flow, which is basically a data repository, you know, where you store your data, and then suddenly you import it into Power BI, which creates another data set, and then you publish it to the service, and then you have both data sets in there. Sometimes that doesn't make any sense. So now you have the possibility to directly connect to the data flow. There are always bad direct query is very, very, very restrictive. And I haven't been able to use it very successfully, to be honest. So be careful when you use direct query though. And M query parameters. If you don't know what that is, I've done a video a while ago. I will post the link down below, but it allows now for a select all. So it's not just a toggle thing like you will have on a normal folder. You toggle it, but you need to change the M code too. So make sure you check the documentation to see what you need to add in order for that to work, okay? So for the data connectivity, I have some great news. We are going to have a webinar on Wednesday. I'm going to post the link down below where we are launching a new Power BI connector. This is not certified yet, so you will not see it on the blog, but it will allow you to access the OECD, the IMF, the UN data, the Eurostat data. I mean, huge, huge, and very good data sources without knowing any JSON or parsing weird stuff, you just install the connector and consume data is going to be great. If you want to join the webinar, link down below so you will see examples of what data sources you can get and people actually using the connector and see what they can do with it. It's super, super cool. I will do a separate video, videos about that, but just if you want to see the introduction of the connector, join us on Wednesday, okay? Now, a lot of updates for the service this month. The first one is on data sets, discoverability of data sets. So here's the thing, you're a data owner, you have this amazing data set, it's like, oh my God, I want to share it with the entire organization. Tough to do before, right? Well, now you can actually certify, promote and certify the data set, so it becomes available for anyone in the organization. 
And it doesn't give them access, though. So if you've already, if that person has already access, it will see it, it will access it. If not, they will be able to request access. And if this is something that you find a little bit dangerous, as an admin, for example, you can actually say that only certified, not promoted data sets will be discoverable. So you limit the number or what things can be discovered in your organization. And also, as a data owner, you can endorse your set data set but keep it non-discoverable for people that do not have access. For example, finance data sets. Can imagine that that would be one thing. You don't want to spread your financial data everywhere, depending on what it is. Okay? Mandatory label policy for Microsoft information protection sensitivity labels. Okay, what it means is that you tag your data. You say this is confidential, this is public, this is whatever. There are some organizations that actually have to tag all the data sets. They have that request because maybe it's like highly confidential information and they have to tag it. So now there is a, they have introduced a mandatory label policy. So if you turn that on, what it means is that your users will be required when creating Power BI data sets or creating new content or any content that has not a label, they will require to add the label. Okay, they will be forced to add labels. And to help manage for big organizations that have these type of requirements, they have created an API so you can actually tag data sets through the API and do it, you know, quicker, basically. And Big joy for those that use data sets, you can now manage and deploy data, data flows with deployment pipelines. It's basically like a stage environment where you can actually say, okay, you test it, you put it in stage, and then you send it to everybody. You don't just publish just your changes right away because that might not be a good thing. Okay, so, and there is an API for that too, for manage. Um, deployment pipelines. For the mobile, there is a new look for the Power BI Windows app. So if you go to Microsoft Store, you have a Windows app, a Power BI app, and they have changed the look and feel a little bit. And also you have the possibility to pass parameters on a paginated report, so URL parameters on a paginated report, okay? So three more updates. There is the Power BI desktop installer changes on July. A new component will be installed alongside Power BI Desktop, the executable file. It is because they are changing the way they are building the Power BI thing. So you will have to install that in order to be able to install Power BI Desktop. Just install it and move on. Nothing worrying there. The next one is there is a new update for Power BI Report Builder. So you can download it and start using it. And if you were using Power BI Embed on SharePoint, you would notice that you would, could only embed the report and you couldn't do anything with the report while they are adding the action bar, which means that you can share, you can subscribe, you can do the, the common things that you can do on Power BI service. You will be able to do it on an embedded report on SharePoint, okay? So this is all for the June Power BI update. I don't have a favorite. A lot of enterprise features that are good to have, but it's not like super exciting. Um, do you have a favorite? Let me know. If I'm guessing that if you're using paginated reports, that is going to be definitely one. Uh, let's hope for next month and see if there's something like really, really good. I'm hoping that they say, oh, a articulator is out of the box, the visual in Power BI. That would make my world. <laughs> but until that happens, We'll see what they come up on July update. Let me know if you have any updates that you really enjoyed. Comments, questions, feel free. So I will see you on Wednesday with a articulator video. And until then, take care and bye bye.